All right, hello and welcome back to episode two. So I'm going to be basically refactoring this scrap code. <clears throat> it works. So first of all, as I'm sure you noticed, um, one easy way to refactor bad looking code is to look for common patterns. You can see that these two um, lines in the then and else statement of this if statement look really similar and they can surely be factored out into some sub function called dot plot <clears throat> tick tick um, where the only argument is say the new um, association list because the other arguments are exactly the same. The index gets incremented, the tail of the string is our, our new current string and we have the exact same k. And if you can hear that sand scraping noise, that's my cat taking a shit. It just took a shit. It just smelled like shit. I just cleaned its shit box. But anyways, um, <clears throat> Could be taking a piss. That's probably what it's doing. Um, but let's think about what what that would accomplish. So we have two sub functions where um, basically all that's changing is the map, um, and the map is sort of our state. And that cat is really digging. Um, and I use this the word state deliberately because state for all stateful operations. Um, if you're new to Haskell, um, can be frustrating. It, it seems like you're stuck doing things in this ugly way, but there is l a light at the end of the tunnel. And that light is called the state monad. So using the state monad may be overkill for this simple function, but I am going to show you how a function might look using the state monad um, because I can. And so, the st if you're not familiar with monads, I'm, I'm not going to explain them. Um, there is a plethora of resources on the internet about them. There's some great videos. Um, I think one of the, the best ones that I saw was um, one of the Channel 9 videos. Um, but anyways, um, you may or may not be familiar with the state monad in particular. And the state monad was one of the hardest monads of all of the the beginner sort of monads for me to understand um, <clears throat> because the context is just weird you think of a monad like a value with a context like a maybe oh it could be just it could be nothing or a list which is kind of like a, a, a non-deterministic kind of collection of whatever numbers or what have you um, <clears throat> but the state monad is a wrapper for a function, and the function takes an s and returns a tuple that is an a comma s. And so I think the the word state is a bit of a misnomer. Um, I think a better name um, would be something like state processor, um, because you don't have a state. What you're working with, what what you what your function wraps is a function that takes a state. And I realize that's confusing, but how it works is when you are in the state monad, you are operating on a function and morphing that function and chaining together that function with other functions. But you don't actually have a state yet. You just have this hypothetical state um, that doesn't exist yet. And it's seeded in the initial call. Um, and then it's unwrapped with one of the many unwrapping functions, run state, eval state, exec state. So hopefully that made some sense. Um, let's take a look at what it might look like to use the state monad. <clears throat> so we get to get rid of this parameter, which is dot plot, because that's going to be our state. And we are going to instead be in the state monad where the first um, value in this type constructor, I don't know if I used the right terminology, I think. Um, 
um, the first type in this type constructor is the, the state, and the second type is what you can think of as the, the return value. So dot plot, I'm going to say, <clears throat> is going to carry around this state, which is a map. And the return value is nothing special. We don't care about the return value because we have all the information we want in this state that we are adding to. And so let's not worry about dot plot not prime for now. Um, but its function signature is not going to change. Its implementation is. Um, and let's instead focus on this dot plot prime. So what just changed? We no longer have access to this association list. Where did it go? It's in the state. So let's start writing some code. We're still going to want this let um, because it's convenient and we need the key. And we're still probably going to want this if, unfortunately. Um, if length key equals equals k. <clears throat> okay, then what we're going to do is, you can see that this line right here is, is an offending line. We no longer have an association list. Um, so how do we get at the association list? Well, it's in our state. And what I really want to do is modify this state. Um, you can do a, a few of the... Um, the basic state operations are get, put, and modify. Um, get simply gets the current state, put simply replaces the current state with the argument, and modify takes a function. And feel free to hoogle around um, or look at the documentation. Um, but I think I have it in my brain, and the compiler will tell me otherwise. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Then, and I'll keep this code for reference, <clears throat> we're going to do... Um, here, let's get some imports in here, actually. Import. Um, thinking ahead, well, I definitely need the constructor. I'm going to need modify. And to eventually unwrap this thing, I'm going to use the unwrapper exec state. And I'll say a little more about that later, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. Oh, no, I hit right. Oh, man. I knew this wasn't going to compile, and I didn't want to see all these errors. But anyways, um, so I'm going to call the modify function, which its type signature is this. Um, it's going to take a function from A to A, and... I'm sorry, am I, let's see, well, you know, let's, let's go ahead and look up the, the type signature, <laughs> control.monad.state, okay, oh, that's where it got me, I was, I was mixing up in my brain, um, keys and values and the actual state, because I'm working with maps and, and state. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. So it takes a state and um, returns a state, and then the entire function returns, or, or the entire function is in the, the, the state monad, and it has an actual return value of zero. Um, so our modify, or this modify, is going to have a type um, dot plot to dot plot, and it's going to be in the state dot plot monad. Okay, I am so sorry for that that brain fart right there. <clears throat> okay, so let's get to writing. So this is going to seem a little weird because I'm going to build myself a little lambda with this weird state parameter. But remember that this we're inside the state monad, and we're sort of like chaining together all these operations. And so we don't really have a state yet. We're going to have a state eventually, but a state is a wrapper for a function that takes a state. I'll say that one more time. A capital S state, the monad, is basically a wrapper for a function that takes a state. So that's what I'm making. So once we have access to the state, it's basically the same thing as using AL from before. It's just an association list, but I'm going to 
call it ST. So, um, <clears throat> then here goes our if statement. If key, here, let me just do that. If key is a member of the state, okay, then we have to be a little careful, careful here. <clears throat> what we want to do, this should be, Okay. <clears throat> In the case that the key is a member of the state, we want to adjust it. So we're going to do the same call as before, and this is not going to be a do, that's where I was messing up. Um, else, this is going to be a map.insert um, into key the value index on state. Whoa! My cat just jumped at the blinds. Okay, because remember that the type of this function here, modify, is from dot plot to dot plot. So now we can get rid of these lines. Um, is this cleaner? Um, I think so. Um, it may be a, an egregious use of the state monad, but who gives a shit, right? Okay. <clears throat> I say that facetiously. Um, the next thing we need to do is um, chain together another operation. So remember that modify just returns unit so it, it, we don't care about the return value. Um, but what we do want to do after we modify the state is then basically modify it more by <clears throat> calling ourself um, recursively with our familiar index. My cat is climbing my blind, my... Uh, window like spider cat right now okay um, so index plus one k stays the same and we have our tail okay else return unit because we don't want to do anything okay I'm gonna hit compile I'm gonna hit write and oh get out of here um, it's probably gonna complain Oh, oh, something. Um, uh, let's try this. No, still. What could you possibly want from me? If key is a member of state, then map dot adjust cons index key state. What do you need to move? Okay, that was weird. Okay, so ignoring these compiler errors here, we're seeing a use when. So I think when is in um, the state monad itself. Um, maybe it's not. I'll look it up in a second. But um, basically, since my then statement consists of a monadic operation and my else is just a return unit it basically a, a no op a do nothing um, it's a lot cleaner to use when like my compiler is telling me so when length key is equal equal to k then the second argument is going to be a do and then this goes away not a scope um, where are you from when oh it's from Okay, it is from control dot control dot monad dot state. Okay, and let's keep it alphabetical, shall we? <laughs> okay, so finally, um, we've we've introduced the the state monad into this function. 
personally, I like it. I don't know if it uh, tickles your fancy, but um, I seem to be seeing less nested if statements, although we still do have the one. Do still have the one. Okay, finally, let's um, fix our outer call to this function. So we are going to use exec state. There are a few different state unwrappers. Run state will get you both the value and the state. Um, eval state will just get you the value, um, which is useless for, I want ex exactly the opposite of that. I just want the state. Um, so exec state is the one I want. And it's going to take my state, um, which is dot plot zero as the index. And then I am going to need the K and the string again. Um, <clears throat> and then as the second, arg second argument, it's going to take the initial state, which is mapped on empty, excuse me. And um, if I wanted to, I could even um, say something like, um, or make some little function in it dot plot dot plot dot plot that might be a little nicer okay and I think that pretty much does it um, of course let's try it out um, dot plot Three, foo foo, and it works. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.